So when we're thinking about the, this layer of painting, uh, we're, going, we're going to continue to draw. Um, we're going to use this base, this underpainting, um, to get uh, better values, better colors. Uh, and we're going to be starting to use just pure paint. I'm going to be using pure paint right out of the tube. It's going to be uh, you know, relatively thick, although that doesn't mean I'm going to be using tons of paint either. Um, um, but I'm definitely going to be more opaque. I'm not going to have this kind of swirly, blotchy um, flesh, um, but you'll, you'll see that as we go. What I do want to do before I get started and, and what I forgot to do last time is add a little bit of background. So to do the background color, I think I'll just do something kind of neutral. I'll do a, a burnt umber and an ultramarine blue mixture. And for the sake of speed, I am going to add a little bit of medium just for this background because I don't want it to be thick and time consuming. Just going to add a touch more. Uh, and this is also an opportunity to continue to draw as well. Uh, when you're doing the contour for the background, when you're doing really anything, always take it as an opportunity to reevaluate. I think if you get too precious with your work or if you've, you know, you, you forget to draw at some point, sometimes uh, the quality can slip. And sometimes when you're adding new things, uh, the likeness might slip away a bit. So you just want to be cognizant of your, your um your drawing basically at all times so adding a bit of background not really being too precious about it either sometimes i like these rough backgrounds um, they can create a really nice effect i really just want something to start to play the skin tone off and that's what they're really uh that's what the background is really important for you know the the way that the background looks informs how we read the flesh tone and already I'd say actually the flesh tone looks a little bit better. And against the white, it was looking a bit gray. It was also looking a little bit dark because it's against the white. Um, so now we can jump in and do some, some real painting. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna jump into the cheek. Um, maybe I'll do the cheek and forehead. more so you can see how I tackle parts like that. So I'm already taking note that I think I'm going to go just a little bit lighter with the top of the cheek. And really some of these first strokes are just kind of getting your bearings. Um, so I'm, I threw in a little bit of a light. It's looking a little bit, maybe a little bit yellowy. Um, but I'm also going to throw in one of my darker areas, which is the shadow. So with the shadow color, uh, it's mostly burnt umber, but I've started to add some of this darker mixture in. First, I'm going to push some of my burnt umber into the some of these halftone mixtures. So pushing the burnt umber and adding white to it can get really gray and kind of gross and chalky. Uh, but if you add a color that's relatively chromatic, like one of these, these colors along here, I can even add a little bit of red to it. I think it will. Uh, it can get turned into a much nicer color. So I'm, I'm actually happy with that color and value uh, for somewhere like the cheek. And so this is just a, an estimate, but I'm going to be relatively loose with my application. Uh, I do want it to be more opaque and have better coverage, um, but I'm not too concerned about it. Um, looking quite right yet. What I want to do next is, is really start to work my way out of the shadow. So I know how light I want to be. And, and so it's often easier to hit the light values and hit the dark values. It's this mid range that's really difficult. Um, so one thing that I like to latch on to when I'm, when I'm trying to figure out how light or how dark to go within the, the cheek range, for instance, where it's going darker and darker towards the shadow is I'll try to hit my shadow value as best I can. Uh, I'm partially taking note that, um, and I'll, I'll just chuck in, um, sometimes throwing in your, your very darkest dark. 
So a burnt umber and a blue in this case. If I put that in the hair, because her hair is very dark, I can start to see the, that my, compared to the hair, my shadow value in the face is looking pretty good. And I think I just hit it a bit closer because of experience. Um, but throwing in your darkest dark can be a really good idea just to give you sort of, uh, you know, how dark you could possibly go and then how dark your shadows are compared to that dark. And then you can start to figure out your half tones out from there. So right beside the shadow, I'm gonna try and figure out this value right along here. And in portraiture, I do like to go a little bit redder in the cheek. It does get a little bit cooler towards the shadow, which I can do a little bit more of. But typically what I do is I work, I work in these ribbons to begin where I'm happy with the, the range of value between that value and then the cheek shadow value. Uh, I think there could be another value kind of right in between them, which uh, we can do in a little bit. Oops. Actually, I don't, I don't need to do that. Um, what I'll do next though is I'll just start working my way up towards the light area. And so we have, we end up having this kind of ribbony effect where you have just the values changing ever so slightly. So you can see I'm, I'm still using the same brush to do these little steps. Uh, I am trying to take note of how the, the color is changing as the value changes. Actually, I want to go back to the dark. I just want to fill it in a little bit more. So I'm, I'm kind of making this, I'm making a mess of my color now, but uh, most of it is cadmium red, a little yellow ochre. And I think I want to go a little bit darker, so I'm going to add just a, this little bit of viridian that's hanging out there. And I'll bring that color across. You can blend a little bit too as you go. We'll go, sometimes I like putting a little bit of a lizard in the cheek too. It's a little bit pinker. You can see it's quite a bit pinker in this pile. We can put some of that in and then I'll, I'll continue to lighten. And eventually I will switch brushes to a lighter brush too, but for now, I'm going to keep going. I am going to pay attention to some extent uh, to the halftone shapes. So I noticed that the halftone does go right below the cheekbone. Um, it creates just a slight hard edge there. And then it's got kind of the shape that comes over in this direction where it's all relatively dark in there. Um, so I'm, I'm paying attention to some degree, but I'm more interested in the value changes for now. And then with the lights, I found that my lights are a little bit, a uh, little bit chromatic. And so what I've done actually is that, and I'll do this sporadically, especially in the lights, I'll take a little bit of my background color and put it right into my flesh color. And that way we're starting, not only do we read the, the flesh tone based on its surroundings, but um, if you incorporate some of the background color into your flesh, it can make for a really nice um, uh, sort of uh, harmony. I'm really just building the form. I'm going, I'm trying to round the cheek. So I know that to round something, I need a pretty soft transition from dark out to the light. So I'm trying to get a number of different values in that range. I'm keeping them relatively separate at this point. And you can see each time I change values, it does change color at least a little bit. So that might be the addition of white alone, or it might be the addition of uh, a little bit of yellow or a little bit of blue, because you can see, um, well, I can see in the picture that the front part of her cheek here is a little bit lighter and a little less red than her cheek. So that's something I can keep in mind uh, as I go uh, and as the, the values and everything change. Mm -hmm.